Hello everyone, thank you for joining me for another deck tech. For a long time, I've been looking for a commander that works well with a self-mill plan, which basically wants you to mill yourself out in hopes of playing a lab man effect to win you the game. There have been a lot of good contenders. I found my niche, finally, with today's commander, the Ancient One. The Ancient One is a legendary creature spirit god. It costs a blue and a black. Yes, only two mana. It's an 8-8, and it has the Ancient One can't attack or block unless there are eight or more permanent cards in your graveyard, and you can pay two, a blue, and a black to draw a card, then discard a card. When you discard a card this way, target player mills cards equal to its mana value. So, it's really easy to get out onto the board, and its ability can be activated multiple times per turn, even on the turn that we get it out. If we focus the deck around having expensive creatures in our hand to discard to the Ancient One's ability, get the value out of milling ourselves down to nothing, and in the meantime protecting our game plan by recurring insanely strong creatures, we have ourselves a pretty solid game plan. Let's get into it. Let's talk first about the core of the deck, Self Mill. The ultimate win con of the deck is to get Jace Wielder of Mysteries, Laboratory Maniac, or Thassa's Oracle onto the battlefield, which will all win us the game if we have no cards in our deck under slightly different scenarios. Our commander is going to do the heavy lifting for Self Mill, but we can accelerate that and include other cards that work well with Self Mill. Let's start with Dreadhound and Sir Conrad the Grim, which both have a way to mill us more, but also give us a benefit whenever we mill creatures in the form of draining our opponents. These are great payoffs and definitely a way that we can win, even without milling ourselves all the way out. We have Ashiok Dream Render and Jace Memory Adept. These are great planeswalkers for our game plan. Ashiok will mill ourselves and then exile all of our opponent's graveyards. And then Jace Memory Adept can mill a player 10 cards, including ourselves, for zero loyalty counters, which is just a very powerful thing to have on the board. And both of these are ones that your opponents will want to action quickly so you stop getting so much advantage off of them. Curse of Unbinding and Fraying Sanity are curses that we can play on ourselves to make ourselves mill a ton every turn. Curse of Unbinding especially I like because I can look for a big creature that we can put into our hand and mill the rest of the cards and then that big creature can be discarded to the Ancient One. Angel of Suffering will protect us from damage and let us mill cards instead, which is huge because this will be a big deterrent for our opponents, who will definitely see what we're doing and won't want to attack us as a result. Dreamborn Muse will make everyone mill equal to the number of cards in their hand, which is going to be more helpful to us than not. Fleet Swallower can instantly put half of our deck into our graveyard, which accelerates our game quite a lot. Phanax, God of Deception, can make our creatures on the battlefield even more effective at milling, including our commander, who will mill 8 when it taps. And finally, we have Screaming Swarm, which will mill every time we attack with any creatures, which is super handy, and it can also get itself out of the graveyard if we end up milling it, which is also super handy. Now, there are a lot of expensive cards in Magic that do a whole lot for a lot of mana. And by expensive, I don't mean that they are a lot of money to buy, but rather they are a lot of mana to cast. Let's go through cards that we are most likely discarding to the Ancient One, but they also could have some utility to them if we need to cast them. Delve is a great way to inflate a mana cost, so Dig Through Time and Temporal Trespass have a crazy high mana cost. We can delve them to make them cheaper, and they're honestly really great spells to cast one giving card advantage and one giving extra turns, but we can also just discard them with our commander to mill a ton of cards. Shadowgrange Archfiend is a great way to knock out our opponent's big stuff, and then we can cast it for three when we discard it. But in addition, when we discard it, it'll give us seven mil. So this is a great one to have. In fact, a lot of madness cards are great as long as they have a high mana value to begin with. Archon of Cruelty does a ton of stuff. And so it's an interaction piece and a drop piece, all for eight mana. Artisan of Kozilek only does its recursion when we cast it, but its Annihilator 2 is powerful, and it's a really big creature at 9 mana. Hulking Metamorph has a high cost and is a clone effect. We could cast it for its prototype cost if we wanted to, but otherwise we're probably discarding it for 9 mil. 
Icebreaker Kraken has a mana value of 12 and will be the reason we include Snowlands in this deck. It's great at freezing up our opponents if we can get it out, but also can provide 12 mil. Shadow of Mortality is almost the biggest mana value that we could have put into this deck, with a whopping 15 mana value. This is almost definitely better discarded than not, but if we want a 7-7 late game, it's a good pick. Honestly, it's not really that great of a creature to get onto the battlefield, but 15 mil is great value. Baneful Omen is itself a big enchantment, but it benefits from having big spells on the top of our library because it will drain our opponents. And let's actually go on a tangent here because this leads perfectly into our top deck sub theme that we have. See, manipulating the top of the deck is important for two reasons. One, a bunch of these big spells care about it. And two, if we draw a card with the Endless One's ability, we can immediately discard it, meaning that if we get the same card on the top over and over again, we can take advantage of that multiple times. Halimar Depth and Ponder both manipulate the top few cards of our library to position the right cards there for the right situation. Mortuary Mire will get us a card from our graveyard and put it on top of our library so we can get back that Shadow of Mortality, for instance, and put it straight back on top of our library. Submerge is a great interaction piece, but it also takes advantage of our creatures that are already on the battlefield, and we can put them on top of the library to get milled again. Keen Duelist is another payoff, just like Baneful Omen, letting you reveal the top of your library of the upkeep and then you'll make an opponent lose the life equal to the mana value of that card and then you put that card into your hand essentially acting like a backwards dark confidant and works really great in this deck Next, let's talk about our Recursion, the other core tenant of this deck. Naturally, we're going to be dumping a bunch of cards into the graveyard, and that includes some of our best cards in the deck, so if we have a way to efficiently get those back out of the graveyard, we're going to get a lot of value from that. Boneyard Parlay is a fun, expensive spell that I've never seen before. It kind of acts like a factor fiction, but we get to choose the creatures and we get to choose all good ones without worrying that our opponents are going to give us a bad choice. Connive and Concoct has a mana value of 9 which is great for the deck, but the Concoct Half also has a great recursion and mill utility. Crucible of Worlds can help us get our lands back since we're probably going to be milling them into the graveyard and then we can play them from there. Dread Return and From the Catacombs are essentially do the same kind of recursion of bringing back a creature, but they can be cast from the graveyard, which is a huge bonus. Gyruda Doom of Deaths mills everyone and gets us a creature we milled back as long as it has even mana value. We have a lot of great targets for this that we can take advantage of, but we can also take advantage of our opponents who mill as well. Living Death will swap all of the creatures in all graveyards with their owner's battlefields. This, I would say, is great if you know you can win this way. If you can still win with the self mill plan though, I'd recommend sticking to that. But it's also a great chance to get your Oracle or Labman out if you milled them into the graveyard. Obsessive Stitcher can also discard and draw cards, but you can sacrifice it to return something else, which is pretty efficient with all of the large creatures in the deck. Phyrexian Reclamation is an excellent card here since we can put those cards into our hand and then discard them again to the Ancient One. This is almost definitely a staple in any Ancient One deck because it has a low ceiling to activate and it is perfect for the strategy. Port of Carfell is a land that we can use to self-mill and recur a creature. Portal to Phyrexia will recur a creature every turn, plus... It costs 9, so it's a great card to discard early game. Rise of the Dark Realms also costs 9, and if we have a large graveyard, this is definitely going to do a lot of damage and possibly win the game, just like that, just like Living Death. Stitch Together is cheap and easy to use, and we're almost definitely going to have that threshold, so we can always put that creature back onto the battlefield. Cauldron of Eternity is a 12 mana spell, so it makes sense to have here, but it's kind of a double-edged sword. In a board wipe situation, those cards end up going to the bottom of our library instead of the graveyard, which is not something we generally want because we want our library to get smaller. So this card is better discarded, but if we need the recursion, it's useful for that too. Vampire Charm Seeker is a pretty Pretty cool 8 mana spell and it gives us instants and sorceries as well back to our hand. This is a great target for recursion, a great card to discard, and a great engine for recurring so it's a win on all fronts. With a large graveyard, we can take advantage of it by having creatures that care about how many things we have in our graveyard or benefit from being in the graveyard. The only example of one that we have that does that is Wonder, which gives our creatures flying if it's in the yard and we have an island, something we're probably going to do. 
Boneyard Mycodrax has power and toughness equal to the number of creature cards in our own graveyard, which is surely going to be high, but the real benefit here is its scavenge ability that is going to let us pump up a creature dramatically if this is already in the graveyard, which we can just let mill or we can discard it to the Ancient One for some extra mill. Cruel Somniphage both does self mill and cares about how many creatures are in all graveyards, and it's a sweet card to have in this deck. Mortivore also cares about how many creatures are in all graveyards, and it regenerates itself, which is very handy. Next we have Sewer Nemesis, and if we choose ourselves with this ability, it's going to get stronger the more that we mill, and will force us to mill whenever we cast a spell, which is pretty strong synergy in our deck. Soul Separator is a neat one. With its ability, we can exile a card from our graveyard, make one token that has its abilities but none of its power, and make another token with no abilities but all of its power. I put this here because this benefits a lot from having creatures in our graveyard that have big abilities or just are big and we can use them again on the battlefield. Consuming Aberration doesn't actually care about our own graveyard, but the residual effects of our self mill plan mean that our opponents are most likely also going to have big graveyards, and Consuming Aberration will help us accomplish that as well. It also gives our opponent something to target because it affects them more than it affects us. I've bundled the rest of the cards together in the deck just as utility cards, since there are a few interesting things, but mostly it's just support for the Demir strategy. For interaction, we've got Arcane Denial, which helps us draw cards and counter things. Drown in the Lock, which is a great counter spell and a great removal spell. Avatar of Woe, which has a steep mana value of 8, but is really efficient at destroying creatures and not hard to cast for cheaper. And Curtain's Call, which has a similarly strong removal spell effect with a similarly high mana a cost that gets lower with more players. We have a couple of cards dedicated to drawing cards with Deep Analysis, which we can cast from the graveyard if it gets milled, Treasure Cruise, which is another expensive card with Delve, and Windfall, which is simply unmatched at wheeling in blue on a budget. We also have Lightning Greaves, which protects the Ancient One from outside threats. Another card that doesn't really fit anywhere is Training Grounds, which can bring the activation cost for the Ancient One's ability down to only a blue and a black mana, which makes it much easier to activate multiple times on a turn. And last, we have our ramp package and our lands. Per usual, the ramp package is pretty standard with Arcane Signet, Demir Signet, Felwar Stone, Mind Stone, Soul Ring, Talisman of Dominance, and Thought Vessel. For our lands, we've included a bunch of them already in this deck tech, but here we also point out a couple of cycling lands that we included. These are great at discarding themselves so that we can draw a card, which adds more consistency and makes our graveyard bigger. Those cards are Baron Moor, Desert of the Glorified, Desert of the Mindful, Fetid Pools, Lonely Sandbar, Polluted Mire, and Remote Isle. In addition to those, we have our standard Demir mana base with Command Tower, Drowned Catacomb, Morphic Pool, Myriad Landscape, Shipwreck March, Sunken Hollow, Temple of Deceit, Watery Grave, and then nine snow-covered islands and nine snow-covered swamps. The Ancient One is a really fun, cheap to cast, cheap to activate commander that loves self mill and having a big graveyard. I'm excited to test this out against my friends, but let me know what you think of all of this. Would you take the deck in a different direction? Any big mana spells that I missed that you would include? Let me know in the comments. Thank you for watching, and I hope you look forward to the next one.